My biggest goal growing up was to be a professional golfer. I love the grind, the feel of the ball off the club, and the sound of the ball hitting the bottom of the cup. I gave up that dream long ago. How then did I end up playing in a tournament beside one of the greatest to ever play the game? Bernhard Langer. He is the ageless wonder. 15 consecutive years with a win. Bernhard Langer does it again. Number 46. Number one on the all-time list. And arguably more importantly, what the heck does this golf experience have to do with data science? Jeff Kleiber, you're the tournament director here at the SAS Championship. I'd love to learn a little bit about the history of the tournament sure. and how it's evolved into an event like pretty much I've never seen out here <laughs> watching a lot of professionals. Yeah, it's a pretty unique week on tour for these guys. This event started in 2001. Dr. Goodnight making a commitment to bringing an event to this community. And it really was a golf tournament for many, many years. And then we started layering things on like a 5K and a food truck Friday and a women's day that we've done now for 10 years and had 250 people at this week. Last year, adding a HBCU Invitational where we'll have 16 historically black colleges and universities, golf teams competing. This weekend in a 54 hole event, nine men's teams, seven women's teams. They'll do a career day at SAS. So it's just become so much more than the, you know, the PJ Tour Champions event. And it's, it's, it's become a big part of the community. The competitive spirits of any athletic event, especially golf, presents a nice uh, platform for innovation, for ideating, because uh, so many small details matter when you think about the bigger picture, right? The practice makes permanent analogy uh, sticks with me when we think about uh, building models, designing artificial intelligence, making sure that the data going into those algorithms is clean. Those small details can lead to really big differences in your outcome if you're not careful. Take a wedge off to the left or right of the uh, fairway and next thing you know, like you're in the rough. Overall, golf as a game has changed very little. On the other hand, how to get good at golf and how to improve has dramatically innovated over time. I talked to top 100 teacher Michael Breed about the innovation and change that's happening in this sport that I love. One of the things that I do when I give a, a clinic, I try to explain to people how I can tell them what their favorite club is without ever asking the question. And so I go through the, this guy's bag and he's got a seven iron and it's got a wear out in the thumb spot that is so noticeably different than any of the other clubs. I go, I start with wedges and I go all the way up and I get to the, the seven iron and I go, okay, so I put that one aside and then I keep going and I go, okay, here's your driver. This has a totally different grip. So now I know you're practicing with that a lot. I don't know if that's your favorite club, but I know that you know that that's a club that you need to hit well. Well, we might know what the analytics are. There's an, it's another step to then go and practice what you need to practice in order to improve. In the business world, you'll, you run to the weakness. Yeah. Out here, you run away from the weakness. There's a player that I'm working with and they tell me that they're struggling with their, their golf. I say, okay, I want you to just bring your scorecards from your last six rounds. And so we look at the scorecards and we start to see late bogeys, late bogeys. And I ask this question, what time do you tee off typically? He goes, yeah, well, I'm, I do this stuff with my kids and then I, I tee off around one o'clock. And all of a sudden there's a shadow issue and I struggle with shadows. That's hard to find that in the data. Putting downhill in the afternoon is harder than putting downhill in the morning. Interesting. And the reason why is, is because of the traffic. Take a, a, a device, it's called a, a, the perfect putter, and roll a ball from 15 feet down a hill at eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning, and I can make 10 of 10. I go this exact same place at five o'clock or four o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm gonna be six of 10. Because of the footprints, because of the, the imperfections that take place over the course of the day, and now you start to go, okay, so that means that when I hit an approach shot in the afternoon, it's even more important for me to be under the hole because I gotta, I gotta take it to where I can hit the ball a little faster. So I gotta play under the hole. And so now that changes maybe club selection. There's all kinds of things that you can get out of all the data, but then you've gotta kinda dig down to find out how to use that data to help you shoot lower scores and play better golf. It's great that data can be applied to helping people improve golf scores, but I was also surprised to find that similar insights from sport are helping save lives every day. 
One of the things that we're doing that I think is really cool is we're working with a, um, a couple of ex-sports people who brothers were firefighters and one of them is a police officer. And one of the things they thought about is that their physical therapy and their recovery and as a sports person gets top of the line, where our first responders gets almost nothing. So basically we were working with them with SAS and doing a lot of range of motion, this kind of thing, video cameras and stuff around how to do recovery. To try to give those people as much recovery as our athletes. Just the amount of data, the amount of stuff that's available at your fingertips in analytics is just every year like increases and grows. The importance of understanding that data is growing right along with it. There's a cost to it. You know, how much am I storing? You know, what am I doing with it? Am I doing anything with it? You know, a lot of people, a lot of companies store it and they don't do anything with it. A lot of companies are trying, but they just don't have it. And I think that's another great place that SAS can help them pair. This tournament was held in Cary, North Carolina, and I was shocked to see that analytics were weaved into the very building blocks of the town itself. So Nicole, we're here in this beautiful park that's under construction. I think it's opening uh, the middle of November. Um, that is correct. Correctly. So the park has been a project that's been going on. I would say it's a dream of right the community that's been going on for several years. Obviously you can look around, it's coming to fruition. It'll be open in November. I think it signifies a real urbanization of Cary from going from very suburban to a little bit more urban. This will be known as a destination. I think it's gonna be a phenomenal asset to the town. Things are adapting and changing, whether it's parking patterns, whether it's building a beautiful new downtown, whether it's looking at sustainability, climate change, all of the things. And so we're, we're looking at that in the park by employing some IoT sensors to capture data. So this is really an experiment for us to look at different ways to capture data. And then how can we use that to not only improve the experience at the park, but then take that to other parts in the community. Because you have all these people relocating here, you've got a mass, you know, a mass of different cultures and different people. And I think we're all in it together. There's a, like a, a real sense of community and we want to build the best place ever. And I think that's very, very unique to other cities that I've lived in anyway. Amazing, and this seems like an incredible place for yeah. people to congregate and get together and, and create a lot of memories together. Yeah. While this whole event was about me getting to experience playing golf at a high level, it was also such an eye-opening experience to see how Golf has transformed over time. It's not that the game has changed, but how people approach the game and improve the events and the technology surrounding the game and the people in the community and the value that is created from this game itself. So I'm here with Jen Chase, the CMO at SAS. Jen, how you doing? Awesome, I mean, what a great day, right? It is so beautiful out here. The facilities are awesome. The golf and company is great as well. What does the SAS championship mean to SAS? You know, this is now a 23 year tradition for SAS. Um, and for us, it offers us an opportunity to really showcase that this is a great place to live, work and play in this region of Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, second, it allows us to connect with customers and partners in a different way. Like you can create memories out here on the course like we're doing. Um, and then the third, it allows us to give back to the community through some charitable giving in areas that are really important to our CEO and founder, Jim Goodnight and his wife, Anne. Um, something I know that you're gonna be involved with here with us, which is the HBCU Invitational. This is our second year of partnering with the PGA Tour to bring HBCU teams in and, and have a tournament right alongside of the pros. And it's the only tour stop where they're playing on the same course at the same time. And that's just really, truly incredible. We bring them uh, to our headquarters um, for a career day. So it really talked to them about what is life gonna be like after college? Um, maybe it's not gonna be in golf. Maybe you're gonna select a career in another area and, and to know that SAS is gonna be somebody that cares for them you know, today when they're playing in this tournament and years to come. Amazing, Jen. I can't wait to, to speak at the career day tomorrow and thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Happy you're here. We could see innovation happening everywhere around the golf course, even though it was the champion store, the event for the people who were in the last leg of their career. I love this experience and it's been unbelievable to see how much change is happening in one of the most traditional games of all time. Come on, come on yeah! yeah. Thank you very much. Perfect. Enjoyed so it, really did. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. All right, I'm good. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good job. Good job. 
I'm here with Coach Smoot, head coach of Miles College. He's also the president of the BCGCA. What does this tournament mean for you? What does the tournament mean for uh, your college athletes? It's exciting because they are supporting our HBCUs on golf programs by, you know, bringing us out to show our talents. I think SAS is doing an amazing job for us as HBCUs to introduce our kids to uh, a different a different world. Uh, if you look at this, this establishment and what it offers and what it brings to the table, it's amazing. When we introduce our schedule to our kids, especially our newcomers every year, we explain that SAS Championship is not just a golf championship. You're gonna have the opportunity to go onto a Fortune 500 company's campus, be able to meet people, hear from employees. This whole three days, it's not just about golf, it's about them really realizing like, it's bigger than just being a golfer. It's who I am, what type of student I am, what do I wanna be when I grow up? And I know that sounds so cliche, but so many kids get on this campus and go, whoa, like IBM's right down the road, SAS is here. Like this is a type of a job I may wanna be able to pursue. When I was playing the game, we didn't have analytics. So innovation is just enhancing uh, the student athletes ability to perform on the golf course. I just think it just encapsulates of what SAS is trying to do with the sports industry. I mean, and just, I know that's a, a really kind of a weird way to look at it, but data analytics, telling our kids innovation can be applied to any part of your job. Innovation is, is important, it's not going anywhere. Matter of fact, it continues to grow and I think I'm becoming ancient. My guys keep me on, keep me on task when it comes to things like, you know, innovation and and technology. Well, I love that. Innovation is not going anywhere. That might be one of the best quotes <laughs> we've had all week. If you all would join me in giving a warm welcome to the head of data science and scouts consulting group and YouTube count <laughs> content creator, Ken G. Come on, Ken. As it turns out, the opportunities that I created in pursuit of my own interests working in data and creating videos made more opportunity for me than my golf game ever did. Innovating on my approach allowed me to have the best of both worlds, working in domains that I love and getting to experience the benefits of a career playing golf. I also have to give it up to SAS. This was an incredible experience. I appreciate that they let me come out here and live out at least some semblance of my dream. But I also have to give them kudos for innovating on a field and in a domain in analytics that they helped to start.